Caddis Maximus here. This time, it's a simple video. Uh, I'm not much of an electronics technician, but I do find uh, quite a few of these little rechargeable tools, like these little skill cutter and this little skill driver. Uh, at thrift stores, garage sales, many times they are missing their chargers, and they're, that's why I pick them up. They're real cheap. And people have asked about these wires coming out, and since I didn't have a charger, I ended up uh, adapting a 6-volt power brick uh, so that I could charge these. And so I'm not much of a technician, but there's just a couple of simple things um, to be able to do that with a variety or do this with a variety of tools. The first thing to really determine is whether or not all the charging electronics are actually inside the tool and all they take is just a regular DC voltage. Some tools, for instance, like this little skill ratchet. Uh, has a special charging base. There's a bunch of electronics, the actual charge indicator and everything's in the base. So this is a situation where we couldn't just plug uh, a DC power adapter into this tool by itself because it does not contain all the charging electronics. And so it, um, and those have, you know, all sorts of stuff to make sure it doesn't overcharge the battery. And so this type of uh, <laughs> modification wouldn't work on those tools. So you really got to have the tools where just everything's all integrated and all you need to do is figure out what voltage it is. And these little skills had tiny little concentric circle plugs, but they were so tiny that I just couldn't find any type of adapter. So what I did is I just took a couple of, uh, you know, went to the computer store and just found some wires with connectors in the bins to use as uh, an adapter so I could plug it in and unplug it and get some charging going. Now let's go and open up, uh, we'll open up the screwdriver here. Here we go, so I finally got this open and in this unit we can see it's lithium ion battery and then this is a big old charged circuit board. So it just had a little concentric circle port that was just soldered here right at the bottom of the board. So what I did is I actually just took a, and desoldered that little concentric circle port and then took just a couple wires and re-soldered them to the terminals knowing that on a concentric circle port, this almost all times the center pin uh, is positive. That's not 100% true, but it's almost a universal standard. So you always just try that way. And so I hooked up a couple of wires and then to a bench power supply. Seeing that it had a lithium ion cell, I knew that those operate at 3.6 volts. The average charge voltage is 4.2. The whole charge board's gonna, of course, drop some voltage as well because it's gonna use some electricity just to run the charging circuitry. So that allowed me to say, well, it has one battery, it's gonna be a minimum of about five volts to be able to charge this. So starting with that information, I said I went and hooked it up, and you really, the key thing is that you need a variable DC power supply uh, to be, I mean, you don't always to do, you could have a variety of power bricks that were say four volts or 4.5 or five volts and switch between them as more of a poor person's way of doing it, poor man's. Uh, but it really helps to have at least some type of basic variable DC power supply. That way you can bring up the voltage and see where it's at or see where it seems to react properly. Now, when I plug this into the six volt adapter, then we, this tool has a nice charging light and it goes from, uh, actually it always shows green when it's charging. It just will show red when it's um, running low on battery. So I turned it up to five volts and it turned out that that little LED was just barely illuminated. So that told me that, okay, it's obviously is not enough. And I moved it up to about five and a half volts and that LED seemed to be reasonably bright, but 5.5 volts is also a pretty darn rare voltage. It's either like five or six volts. There are other voltages that are more common, like a 7.5 volts is much more common than say 5.5. Hence, I could only find a six volt power brick. So I just said, you know, at about five and a half volts, it seems to be okay. And a half volt, even if it the charger was five and a half, if I gave it six, that's still very close to what appears to be the nominal. And the LED seems to have the appropriate brightness and it indeed charged up fine. The LED does turn off when it's done. I also knew that this had a little bit of a safety because this little sticker on here, this is actually a uh, temperature sensor in case the battery overheats, it will shut down the tool or shut down charging. So I thought with the, the additional safety that at least this tool had in there, six volts would be fine. Actually, I've charged this up dozens of times and the six volts has proven to be great. So that's essentially the process to go through is if you find a, you know, one of these small lithium ion tools, people do buy these, lose the chargers, or they just don't like them very much. And if you don't like something, you're not gonna bother keeping track of the charger and the tool. And then the tool ends up floating around the garage and you just put it in a donation box. And 
that's how these things show up. And this is one of the ways that you can recover them and continue to use the tools just by uh, adapting a charger and brake. You just have to uh, be able to assess whether or not this will work or maybe the tool, most of the charging circuitry is actually in the charger base itself. And in that case, there wouldn't really be anything that you could do besides maybe remove all the electronics and just directly wire the switch to the motor to a power supply. Of course, the issue with that is it's no longer a cordless tool and you would need a huge power brick to be able to actually directly power the motor. So I kind of like doing this and being able to do that. I've netted these couple of little tools which have been handy and I've used in quite a few videos. So anyway, that's the end of this kind of short, quick little video about how to um, replace and manually create, uh, test, and then essentially wire up a uh, new charger for some types of cordless tools. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.